So to find the molecular geometry for XeO3, we first need to look at the Lewis structure. We can see that we have three oxygens on that central xenon atom, but we also have these two electrons, this pair of lone pair electrons up there, so we've got to think about those as well. Valence shell electron pair repulsion theory tells us that the atoms there, those oxygens, and that lone pair of electrons are going to repel each other, and they're going to spread out as far away as they can from each other while still being connected to the xenon atom. Because of that, we're going to end up with a structure that will look something like this. You can see that the oxygens are on the bottom, they're spread out, and then we have that lone pair of electrons on the top. So this gives us an idea of the molecular geometry or shape of XeO3. We could also use the AXN notation in our Lewis structure to figure out the molecular geometry. So A, that's going to be the central xenon atom. X, that'll be the number of atoms attached to that central xenon. We have three oxygens, so we'll have a three there. And N, that's the number of non-bonding electron pairs, called lone pairs. We have one lone pair right there, so we'll put a 1 after the N. Now, you could have memorized that AX3N is trigonal pyramidal. Or, if you're allowed, you can look it up in a table. So, looking at our table, we have AX2, AX3, but we need AX3N, so AX456, AX2N, and then AX2N2, but at the bottom we have AX3N, which is trigonal, pyramidal, and the bond angles are about 109.5. In this case, they'll be a little bit different, but that's the general idea. And again, that trigonal pyramidal molecular geometry is going to look like this, sort of like a pyramid with a lone pair of electrons on top. Well, that's the molecular geometry for XeO3. This is Dr. B, and thanks for watching.